Hey everyone, it's Colin Shadwell again for another throwing demonstration. This time I'm doing a genie bottle, which is kind of an interesting shape and kind of a hard one to throw. Um, the goal here is to uh, get the vessel really high at first, but then keep the top really skinny so you can stretch the skinny part of the top. So um, as you can see here, I'm, I've got about, I, I would guess, between well, around 10 pounds of clay or something like that. As you can see, uh, when I center here, I usually, again, just try to get the clay up as fast as I possibly can. Um, I don't really want to have little pulls here at the beginning. I want to try to get big pulls in here. So you can see I've done my typical palm pull and then up into a, a thumb pull and then finally my little uh, side to side finger pulls here. Again, using lots of slip. Now here, when I'm throwing here, I'm trying to, um, again, keep the top I would say two thirds as skinny as possible. So I'm coming back here and calling it out while at the bottom trying to go ahead and bowl this shape out as much as I can. So um, I gotta be really careful because there's not a lot of room at the top. So as you can see, I've kind of wet down my entire forearm there to, so it doesn't grab at the top here. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the shape that I want because I'm not gonna be able to get down in here again once I've kind of um, collared the top end. So now that I have the kind of bowl shape at the bottom, I'm gonna go stem, start working on the top now. This you have to be really slow and delicate. Really, the only thing that can be touching the clay when you're doing this is your fingertips. You can't have any part of your arm or your hand touching the outside of the clay because it's really delicate. It'll start twisting on you. So really, it's just fingertips touching here, just getting pulls and then coming back and collaring and using a lot of slips that the clay doesn't want to twist on you. If your hands are dry, if there's any kind of friction at all, that clay will want to twist and rip off. Now, my wheel is going extremely slow. It doesn't look like it now, obviously, because I'm going at 1,200 times speed or whatever it is. Um, but it is it is moving very very slowly on the wheel so um, again I, I'm just trying to get the general shape I want here I use a little trick of uh, sticking my little wooden rib tool down in the piece and using that to help me get that final little pull that I want to because I can't really get my fingers down there too well so and again just kind of getting the general shape that I want I'll, I'll carve this later on into a better more refined shape but for right now this is pretty close to what I want here so Again, using that rib tool to try to just smooth that as much as I possibly can. So now I'm back after this has dried out quite a bit. And uh, I can go through and start really taking uh, a, a good look back and really stepping back from the piece and kind of seeing the shape that you want. Um, there were parts of the neck that were a bit thicker than I wanted to. And here I'm just going through, obviously, and, and rounding off uh, the, uh, the bottom part and putting a little tiny foot on here. I'm not going to be able to turn this over and carve the bottom, unfortunately, because um, it wouldn't balance. So... Um, I really like to use these plastic rib tools. I think they're great tools, especially when you want to kind of smooth out all the little uh, imperfections. Here I'm putting a little chatter tool uh, design on the top of the neck. I thought this would be kind of cool. Um, I use the corner of it so it kind of makes like little uh, triangles, cuts little triangles out of it. And I always go put it and uh, put a little stop and start lines at the top and bottom, just kind of finish them off. Smoothing out the top part as well. Okay, so here's why I went a little crazy. I decided, again, since my theme here is negative space, that I'm going to start uh, taking parts of the pieces that I throw away. So I've got my hole cutters out, and I've got a variety of sizes here that I use, um, ranging from, I would say, three-fourths of an inch down to maybe an eighth of an inch. So they're uh, a nice variety. So I usually start with the biggest ones and work at the bottom and then kind of go back through with the next size up and work in between there. And then finally, once I get down to the small ones, that's when it just starts to become arduous and laborsome. So this has been sped up to quite a bit. Now I did probably, uh, after, I, after I went back, a good solid hour of poking holes. Um, uh, I literally ran out of uh, memory on my video camera and at that point said I should probably stop and then went ahead and did 15 more minutes of it. I mean you can really, it almost can become an obsession to, to find spots to put more holes in and just keep drilling and drilling and drilling. Uh, the tools that I use are kind of cool because uh, half the top part's missing of it so when you put it in there the, the the piece that you cut out should most times come out with it now a lot of times it does get pushed through which is unfortunate because they're hard to get uh obviously especially with the tall piece like this you can't really get in there too well sometimes i can stick my pinky finger in one of the smaller little uh, or one of the larger holes at the bottom and kind of get some of those pieces out but again here i'm just uh slowly just going through and any spot that i see that could fit a tiny little hole i'll go ahead and poke one in here so it, it's at some point, the hardest part is, is realizing when you need to stop that you've done enough because you could you could go on forever and, and really become obsessive compulsive with the whole process. But 
does take a long time, but then it, it does get a very cool texture. It almost kind of looks like coral reef, and you kind of wonder how it's it's holding up. But you you do have to wait until a, the clay is at a certain uh, dryness. If it's if it's too wet, it'll sort of sag on you. So here's the end result. You can see I went up a little bit higher, and uh, it's kind of a cool little effect. I like the chatter at the top and the holes in the bottom. So this is a nice piece. I hope you uh, like it. And again, thanks for watching.